Hi friends! Quite a long time ago I released a video about homemade semi-automatic welding machine. Later, several videos were released on my second channel. Since then, a lot of viewers have been asking what happened to this semi-automatic machine, whether it was completed. So, today I'll show you what happened to it. But there is one important note. The archive for this video was partially lost, but I still have a lot of videos with the process of assembling, setting up and checking the operation of individual parts of the device. So in the description for this video you will find all the necessary links as well as printed circuit boards, circuits and much more. Well, now sit back and let's begin. The main idea was to create a universal, ultra-reliable device for welding in a protective gas environment, that is a MIG, MAG or simply a semi-automatic device. Moreover, the device was planned to be very complicated. These are not store-bought inverters with savings on everything and no constant load time. This is very reliable transformer device with a safety margin of all components and is capable of operating for hours without overheating. Yes, it is bulky and heavy because it is made on an iron transformer, but it can work for a long time in workshop conditions where there is dust and dirt, although it doesn't have any cooling fans. At this stage, it isn't completely finished. All that remains is to stretch the hoses for the gas supply and add a couple of thermal fuses. The device can work both with and without gas, with quartz self-shielding wire. Over the entire period of operation, I used the latter option. Although welding without gas turns out so-so, there is a lot of spatter. Now, I'll tell you about the characteristics of the device. Maximum output current is 180 amps. Maximum voltage 24 volts. Yes, I know that the upper limit needs to be a little higher so that there will be no problems with ignition. Here that problem is solved in a rather expensive but cool way, with a voltage boost choke. Maximum useful output power is about 4 kW. There is an adjustment of the wire feed speed, the ability to change the polarity for working with and without gas, an automatic operating mode and blowing before and after welding. It is possible to set the shutter speed, which allows you to be independent of the time you press the button and therefore get perfectly identical welded points and joints, because the welding time will always be stable. Thermal protection isn't completely ready yet, but everything necessary for this is already there. Moreover, there will be separate temperature control both on the power transformer and on the diodes of the output rectifier. Here we have a reliable iron case, wheels, large bayonets and everything like that, in a word, nothing has been economized on anything. Everything here is homemade, except wire feed mechanism. The main lower part of the housing is welded from profile pipes. The upper part is taken from the control panel of an old powerful plasma cutter Kiev 4M. The bottom of the housing is made of galvanized steel with a thickness of 1 mm. The lower compartment is divided into two parts with a sheet of fiberglass laminate of impressive thickness. The same fiberglass laminate is used in the front part. The first compartment contains a feed mechanism with a reel. There is a small reel installed here, but I think from the size of the feeding mechanism it is clear that it can handle large reels without any problems. The reel mount is temporarily a bolt, just a bolt. Here we also have bayonets with a docking part for quickly changing polarity if necessary. In the other part there are power components in the form of a powerful toroidal transformer, also known as a power transformer and a two-winding booster choke. It is this voltage booster unit that guarantees amazing ignition. In this part also installed a powerful 300 amps current shunt. This is a current sensor for an amateur. It has no other functions. The amateur and voltmeter show the correct values, although instruments with a scale of a smaller range were needed here, but at that time the necessary options weren't at hand. There are also covers that have now been removed to display the filling. During operation, the housing is closed on all sides. There are ventilation holes, believe me, this is enough. Although, to be honest, the device hasn't been tested in long-term operating mode, but in theory, there won't be any problems. Now, short commercial break. Are you looking for a reliable manufacturer of high-quality printed circuit boards? 
Next PCB, which I hope will become our permanent sponsor and will finance all my unfinished projects, offers its services for the production of printed circuit boards. Next PCB has huge production capacity and works with the top electronics manufacturers around the world. They can produce for you both simple and complex multi-layer boards, up to 32 layer. True, ordinary radio amateurs don't need such complex boards. There is a very large selection of board thicknesses, solder mask colors, trace coatings and a bunch of additional options to ensure that the board complies with certain directives. There is also a convenient and free Gerber viewer for preliminary checking of files. It is possible to produce soldering stencils. And all this is offered at low prices. You will find a link to the next PCB website in the description. There is a door on the side for quick access to the reel and for reconnection or polarity change. Design Device powered from a single phase 220 volt, which is supplied to the power regulator through a circuit breaker. Its phase pulse power regulator made on an old 40 amps triac, which stands on a huge radiator and doesn't heat up in any way. Yes, there is a primary dimmer and it works perfectly. I don't know how much it craps into mains and I don't want to know. It is important to note that the power transformer is disconnected from mains during idle time and is only activated during welding. This saves you electricity and the transformer will not waste heat up. That is, our triac is both a regulator and a contactor. In the power circuits there are no mechanical contactors, no starters, everything is solid state, durable and reliable. The toroidal transformer was used here for a reason. The torus with the same dimensions has greater overall power compared to other cores and also has a rigid current voltage characteristics. And this is important for a semi-automatic device, the voltage should not drop too much under load. In my case, the reduced voltage at the output of the transformer is due to the fact that it wasn't possible to reel up the required number of turns, so I added a voltage boost. This is a snubber chain and it is mostly here for protective purposes. Next, after the transformer, we have a bridge rectifier built on a powerful DCH25160 diodes. These are fairly high frequency diodes, but that's not important here. The important thing is that taking into account the topology of the rectifier, it will also handle 320 amps, and that is, a bridge has a double current reserve. Also, each diode is mounted on a separate huge radiator. Many connections are made with thin copper bars. Next, we have a battery of two capacitors of 80 volts, 23,000 microfarad each, and these aren't consumer goods, but serious capacitors from a serious manufacturer. Then we can see a two-winding choke, which provides voltage boost and reliable ignition. This choke is made on the core from the TS270 transformer. It has two windings. The voltage from the secondary winding is rectified by a separate rectifier, which is made on a 40 ampere diode modules. They are attached to a separate radiator. The power transformer only works for welding. The control system is powered from a separate low power switching power supply with voltage stabilization. It is located in this box. In another same box there is a triac control circuit in the DEMA circuit. The motor of feed mechanism is powered by a separate iron transformer. The voltage from it is rectified by the KPVT5010 bridge although its parameters are more than we need here. Then the voltage is smoothed out and sent out to a 24 volt stabilizer. This stabilizer is assembled on the shown board and yes, oddly enough, it is linear. So this is the only point that is worth changing. It works perfectly, but you can insert something post. Next, the stabilizer 24 volts are supplied to the control board on which we have a PWM regulator which is responsible for powering and adjusting the motor speed. Why not regulate immediately with a linear regulator? At low speeds there will be a lot of losses on this regulator, so this combined solution was used. The second question that arises in the viewer's mind is, 
Why do we need a linear stabilizer at all? Simply after the rectifier will immediately fit it to PWM. Why complicate things? The fact is that initially I wanted to realize a stabilizer of turns with power maintenance, but then I gave up on it. But I need to compensate this moment, so that the motor speed doesn't decrease depending on the weight of the reel and other factors. I decided to power it all from a stabilized voltage. This is worse than a stabilized of turns and much better than a multiple PWM regulator, which has no stabilization at all. Control There are three controls on the front panel. The first provides regulations of the output voltage, in fact power regulations on the primary of the transformer. It's simple, repress the button on the holder, the transformer turns on and we're welding. Release the button, the transformer is turned off, and so is the feed mechanism. The second regulator by the way, it is wire resistor responsible for adjusting the wire feed speed. The third is responsible for the welding time or holding time in automatic mode. The voltmeter and ammeter show the real RMS value of the output voltage and current. There is another voltmeter on the front panel that shows the mains voltage. Another indicator is an overheat indicator, but it isn't connected. Next comes the gas flow regulator, or simply a valve, and a little higher there is a pressure gauge. Why they are here if all this is on a gas cylinder? As I already said, the upper part of the device was taken from the Kiev 4M plasma cutter. They were installed there, so I decided not to spoil the appearance and leave them in my device. I think they look cool. They are fully working, but the gas part, as was said, isn't connected. Next are a couple of switches. Let's talk about them in more detail. The control circuit was taken from the site Savapka.ru. The circuit is called VOL 2.0. I just ordered a printed circuit board at the factory, assembled it, configured and that's all. This board provides adjustments of the wire feed motor speed and automatic operating mode. There are trimming resistors on the board, with their help you can fine tune the delay of turning on the wire feed motor. Gas valve, adjust the welding time in automatic mode, select either automatic or manual mode, and also enable or disable the previously mentioned delays. That is, there are options available in a professional machines, purge, pre-gas, post-gas, and you can weld with a selected duration, minimizing the influence of the operator, to obtain joints or points that are as similar as possible to each other. Convenient and cool. Just one of these switches turns on or off delays for working with or without gas, the other switches the type of work, automatic or manual mode. Everything is as simple. The rest is regulated by regulators. Device assembling. Any person who has ever done something with their own hands will confirm that a lot of work went into it. Cutting, welding, painting the housing, cutting textilite of such thickness, drilling a bunch of holes, these are still minor tasks. Inside, you will see sealed leads and terminal blocks everywhere. All connections are made using tinned copper tips, which are crimped with a hydraulic press and insulated with heat shrink, in some places even with a double layer. The power transformer, choke coil and power rectifier diodes are isolated from the metal housing. The control board is located in a separate plastic case. It closes almost hermetically to protect it from dust. Of course there is a cover but I removed it to demonstrate the filling. By the way, the board is factory made but everything is assembled by hand. Power wires are stranded copper 16 square millimeters. That is, 6 AWG 90% of their wires have non-burning insulation and a high class of flexibility. There is a 25 ampere input circuit breaker. By the way, it's Siemens. There is a fuse nearby that protects all other power sources. The power cord is also with reverse 2.5 square millimeters or 14 AWG, of coarse copper. The bayonets are serious, large, euro connector and so on. I have already indicated that the device is on wheels. They are screwed securely. Now I'll show the device working. Let me remind you that the device is not yet completely ready and we will weld without gas. This is lousy because with gas the quality will be much higher.
but my task is to show that everything works. By the way, the welder is also not real, I'm talking about myself, so the quality will be even worse. Here, installed flux cord wire 0.8, the cheapest small reel from the store. We spray on non-stick aerosol, put on mask, and let's go. The splashes are due to the fact that we are welding with self-shielding wire. There should be no splashes if welding with gas. The welders will confirm. Results The semi-automatic machine has been in my warehouse in this condition for almost a year, and this was my first experience in building a semi-automatic machine from zero. I've met other welders, both simple and complex, many times, but this is my first time semi-automatic one. So please, experienced ones, don't push me too hard and let the couch experts pass by. I know that in some places it could have been done better, for example, stabilizing the speed of the feed motor, but I don't want to tinker with this device. He's good, he's cool, and a lot of effort and money was invested in him. Some of the components, the wire feed mechanism, gas valve, power diodes were donated to me by subscribers. If all this is converted into currency at the time of September 2023, the costs amounted to $500. If you don't believe it, you can calculate it yourself and this doesn't take into account job efforts. Was it worth it or not? As a invaluable experience, absolutely. I'm sure that this is a worthwhile device that will work happily for a long time without any problems in some small workshop or for a person who does car bodywork. Apply gas here and get the perfect weld for most applications. The only and significant drawback for me is the size and weight. Although working with a semi-automatic device requires the presence of a gas cylinder, which itself is already large and heavy, so it is a stationary device. You put it somewhere and operate with the length of the cables, and the device stands still. There are future plans to sell it to good hands after everything is completely finished, but it isn't for sure. It's gathering dust in my warehouse, but it's always pleasing to the eye. From time to time I turn it on, weld something and that's all. After all, I am an electronics engineer and not a welder, or rather just an amateur enthusiast who wants to learn as much as possible in his lifetime, and even then with varying degrees of success. Let me remind you that you will find all the necessary links with boards, circuits and other things in the description. And with this I say goodbye until we meet again. With you, as always, was Kassian TV.